So in order to sort of set our stall out in terms of the location of reflective practice within sports coaching, there are a couple of key principles that we need to consider. The first is this idea that um, in order to de develop knowledge and, and uh, learning, we have to transform the experience into learning through uh, the engagement of reflective practice. So if you consider whether you've made a similar mistake in similar situations twice, the majority of people would kind of argue that they have. And that would suggest that actually we don't naturally learn from an experience. And in sports coaching, where problems are quite complex because we're dealing with human-to-human -human interaction, we need to make sure that we're doing something with our experiences so we do transform them into learning. And essentially, we're engaging in work-based learning rather than an accumulation of hours, for example. And it's sort of best demonstrated through this particular model that's associated with action research. So um, on the bottom left-hand side, we've got this idea of existing assumptions, values, and mental models that we'll have when we start coaching. And we'll plan our activities based on those things. We go and deliver those activities and then if we engage in reflective practice to transform that experience into learning, we start to develop new knowledge, we develop new assumptions or we support our assumptions. And uh, we make better sense of the values that guide our practice. And this allows us to move our uh, practice forward into action research cycle number two and number three. If we don't engage in reflective practice, it's likely that we're, we're just going to move around in circles without questioning those taken for granted practices that would uh, sort of inhibit what we actually do. So in that sense, the complex nature of coaching requires more than the simple theory to practice um, dyad that, that we see in other disciplines. We've got to kind of make sense of the theory in relation to the context in which we're working, and the context includes both ourselves, the environment, and the athletes that we're working with. So we're not really likely to be able to take a theory uh, out of a textbook and apply that theory into practice without considering those factors. In some situations, um, technical rational approaches to practice where we do use uh, theory in more of a blind manner um, are available, but they're very rare within sports coaching because, as I said, of the human-to-human -human nature of the profession. And in that sense, we've got to allow for the uniqueness of the coach, the athlete, and the setting. And, and for us, um, it's the uniqueness of the coach, of the person who's reflecting this, that, that, that's the most important thing because we start to internally examine why we do certain things or how we act in certain ways and in that sense it's that they're the things that we can relatively control. And finally for us reflective practice offers us this opportunity to, le to learn about what coaching actually is, how to actually do coaching uh, rather than just learning about the theories of coaching and applying it in a really technical manner. Um, and so I refer to this idea of the territory where we get this combination of the environment of the athlete, of the coach, and it's that uh, unique mix of uh, those three things that really uh, set the territory for the coaching environment in that sense. And reflective practice allows us to learn about that.